Hi everyone, this is Chauke speaking, a facilitator of building and structural construction N6 at Majuba Tibet College. And I'll be taking you through the same subject and we're going to be dealing with trust design. And this is part 2B of our lesson. We're going to be using J. Bischoff as our reference book. Okay. So, you'll remember that we have already dealt with 5,1, okay, of the question. Now, we're going to go to 5,2. Remember, this is the question from April 2011 exam. And this is question number 5. So, we are dealing with 5,2 now. 5,1 was about bolt connection and then... 5,2 is about welds. It reads like part B is fixed to the gasset blade by means of fillet welding joint with a leg size of 8 millimeters. Determine the minimum effective length of the welding joint. Okay. So now Take note of the leg size, which is 8 millimeters. All right. And we're dealing with part B. I want you to come to 5,3. I want you to take note of this. The grade of our steel for A and B is for the 3. All right. Take note of this. We're going to use it for 5,2. But it's only written here. All right. That is important also for 5,2. Grade of the steel is 53. Okay. So, again, if I were to read the whole question, it says the figure below shows a connection of a steel roof um, with forces acting on member A and B as indicated. You will have realized that uh, this is member A and B. Member A is 88 kilonewtons. Member B is 96 kilonewtons. Okay, this is a tie. Again, this is a strut. Okay. So, we are told that the, the members A and B are single discontinuous angle iron profiles. Okay. Fixed both sides to 12 millimeter gases. Alright, so we are dealing with 5,2. We want to determine again the effective length of the welding joint. Remember, it is advisable that you go through the video on welds connection. Alright, so that you may get a better understanding of what we are doing here. Alright, let's go to the solution. Right, so we want to determine the effective length. So the general formula for stress is for stress is equal to force over area. All right, so we will make force the subject of the formula we cross multiply. So force is equal to stress multiplied by area. So, but stress is one thirty MPa. Okay, where do we get that? We get it from clause 10.7.1.2, which is in page 107 in your book. So, it says, the allowable stress in a fillet weld shall be taken as 180 MPa, that is the stress, for grade 43 steel and 135 MPA for grade 300 double steel. All right. So you remember when I said take note of a grade of the steel, which is only indicated uh, on the 5.3. 5 All right. So the grade of our steel is what is 43. Therefore, the allowable stress is one thirty, so that's where we get this one thirty here. 
All right. So now area is equals to effective length multiplied by a. A is the throat distance. Okay. Now force is equals to stress. If we we substitute uh, remember area is here. If we take this whole thing to here, so this is your area. Length, uh, effective length multiplied by uh, the throat, okay, which is denoted by letter A, is your area, right? So we're gonna make L the subject of the formula. Then now we divide both sides by stress and uh, throat. Uh, now we have effective length is equals to force over stress multiplied by the throat. Okay. So now if we continue now you realize that we do have the stress all right we do have the force okay because for part b is 96 kilonewtons but we do not have the throat so to calculate the throat the throat is equals to 0 0.707 multiplied by the leg length all right so if you go back to the equation you are told or given the leg length to be 8 millimeters. All right. So we're going to substitute that 8 millimeters here. So it's going to be 0 0.707 multiplied by 8. So the throat distance is what? 5,656 millimeters. Now we have everything that we need uh, here to substitute. So the force, all right, is 96 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 to have newtons over 130. 130 is our uh, stress, all right, because of the grade given to be 43. And then we have the throat, which is 5,656, all right. So the length now, or effective length, is 130,56 millimeters. So we're going to just round it up. We're not going to use 130 because this is the minimum. Okay. It can be less than the minimum. So the minimum is 130,56. So we can't, can't use 130 because it's going to be less than minimum. So we round up to the nearest, nearest tenth. So which will be 1 foot. So we're going to use 140 millimeters. All right. So, this is the effective length. You remember, the effective length of a weld is the total length of the weld. All right? I've explained that in, uh, extensively in the previous video or dealing with the weld connections. So, the effective uh, length is the total length of the weld. So, now, we want to know what will be the length on each side, so we divide 140 by 2, and then that's where we get 70. So 70 per side, 70 millimeter per side. So that will be our length. But the question needed this one, which is the effective length, which is 140 millimeters. All right. I hope you got that one. All right. So... That's about it. Stay put for the next uh, video, which will be dealing with uh, 5,3. Thank you.